for this reading vlog. I am going to read one of my most anticipated read of the year and that is Hopeless by Elsie Saber. I've been waiting to read this. Like, low-key though, I don't want to read it because after I read it, this is it. This is the last one in the series. I didn't want to read it, but I know I have to at the end of the day because Bo was like one of my favorite, favorite character. He was my favorite brother apart from Cade. And I'm just like, okay, we have to read this story today. And so today I have nothing to do. I'm sitting in front of a beautiful lake. Perfect time to rip out what I think is going to be one of my favorite read of the year. Hopeless. I that that is a bold statement. But the thing is, I've just been so excited for his story, and I know Elsie will not disappoint. Because when I tell you, I've been waiting for both stories since like flawless, since flawless. I'm like, I just know that his book is going to be amazing, and I also feel like it's going to be a little bit emotional because in the books prior, I think it was like Jasper's story. Something happened to the way he went like MIA, he got captive, he was he's in the army. And so I know this is probably going to be a little bit emotional. I just want to see how he get himself back because like honestly, Bo and Flawless, Bo was just like a funny guy. Like I love his humor, his personality. He was just such a cool character. So I'm just like uh, all of the things that he just went through. I know this is going to be extremely emotional. later after Thanksgiving and I'm actually done with Hopeless. Um, I'm so sad. I'm so freaking sad. This was definitely my least favorite from the Chest and Swing series and I'm shocked. I'm shocked because this is Bo's story and I love Bo. I did not like it. I didn't. It just didn't feel like I was reading a about Bo. I mean, obviously, a lot of things happened to him. A lot of things happened to him. From, uh, I think, Jasper's story, we know that he was captured. We know that he was in the first, like, the same boat that we fell in love in, Flawless, right? But I was expecting this to be more. This was very insta-love, and I love insta-love. Like, I love a first sight, and I love you type of story. Like, I know a lot of people don't, but I'm the, I'm the person to be like, oh, you see me the first time and you love me? I love you too like i think that's cute but i know a lot of people don't like that however though it was so quick and instant they were both so obsessed with each other from like the first chapter and i was just like oh okay i didn't think this was exactly what we were gonna jump into like from the first first chapter i didn't think so but like i can understand like the beginning of chapter one i was already thinking like i'm gonna cry because he was saying how he is and how he is mentally and how he can't sleep and all of this and then like the end of chapter one he's overly thinking of baby and i'm just like oh okay like maybe we're gonna get more stories of him trying to heal himself emotionally for his family in baby and obviously for himself no but in hopeless we follow bailey in Bo. bailey is a shy bartender and i think we met her in like flawless if i'm not mistaken billy had his side of bringing like our whole family is known to be like the troublesome family of the town her brother's always causing trouble her brother is the low life of the town basically and so people kind of just like tell me your last name and i'll tell you who you are type of thing even though billy's not like her brother at all she kind of just think like people hold that against me i cannot get certain jobs people don't take me seriously they think that i'm a bad person she even got fired like in one of a job because her brother did something so she honestly believes that people treat me this way because of my last name. Bo kind of thinks like this is actually not true. He thinks that like the people treat you the way that they treat you because you don't stand up for yourself type of thing. He's like, no, this is not true. And so he's like, I'll borrow you my last name and you will see if this is actually how people think of you. If people treat you the way that they treat you because of your last name. And this is where we get the fake engagement plot. The whole time I'm just like, this is cute. I'm gonna love it. I'm going to love it. And then like Bo came up with the idea of the bet where he's like here's a bet i'll borrow you my last name we can get fit engaged and you will see if people will treat you once you go on to have the eaton's last name or they're gonna treat you the same and that's when i was just like huh i don't think you're thinking that through my brother i don't 
I don't, this doesn't make sense. I feel like being that we know that Bull was captured and being that we know that he went through some things and like he wasn't the same person that we fell in love in Flawless, I thought like we were gonna get backstories into what happened like yeah he said what happened but we didn't really get a full story like exactly what happened and the whole thing just got like glossed over and and we weren't talking about that and the whole time i'm thinking but like he's going through some stuff and he's not talking about it and i want to know what happened it was just so focused on the love part more than like i was expecting emotions and him healing himself for his family and bailey and obviously himself i was just waiting for the emotions to kick in I just didn't give that. And then when he said he was gonna get you, baby, the whole family was just like, oh, congrats. And I'm like, you don't find that suspicious? You don't find that weird? That this man just came out nowhere and be like, yeah, me and Bailey are actually engaged. You didn't even know that they were dating. Like, they were just too naive. And I was just like, what on earth? And everyone was just welcoming. Everyone was just welcome into it and I'm just like, I don't get this. I don't I don't know what's happening. I don't I don't like this. I don't know. But I don't I don't buy this. I think I don't even know what I want to rate it because I love her writing so much. Elsie Silver, I just love her writing. And I love the first four books. So I'm just like, I think I'm just not gonna read this book because I wanna say like a like like a three, maybe a two. I didn't love it. I don't want to be too negative because I know a lot of people love this book. It's just this one out of the series just wasn't for me. Yeah, that's that. However, though, I'm debating whether or not I want to start Cross or Wildfire by Hannah Grace. Thinking that I want to go with Cross, I want to cleanse my palette. And then afterwards, we'll pick up Wildfire. <laughs> yesterday i started yesterday and i thought i said to myself i'm only gonna read four or maybe five ten chapters nothing nothing more i looked up and i was in chapter 28 and i was like oh okay it's it's it's, it's literally emily's writing it's her writing i went to bed put the book down went to bed i woke up in the middle of the night because i couldn't sleep picked up my kindle and now i'm in chapter 41 so it's fair to say that i'm actually just in this up it's emily's writing the way that she makes you fall in love with a villain with a classical villain it's just insane plus her writing is so fast-paced it's so intriguing it's so interesting you just want to know what happens next if you don't know about the never after series it's basically dark romance reimagining of a classic fairy tale like the first one hooked was about peter pain and we were rooting for hooked the first one i was just like i'm not gonna fall in love with captain hook like it's captain hook you do not we don't like this guy you will you, you will if you read it you will you will because this is your reimagining like you honestly just sit in like oh my god why do i understand you now why, why do i want nothing but greatest for you the second one was scar and that was lion king tristan Tr tristan forever forever will be and the third one wretched was a reimagining of uh he said of odds if i'm not mistaken twisted was aladdin and this one the fifth one is a reimagining of the hunchback of notre dame i watched that movie the other day so i could have been like familiar with the characters what was going on and everything and the whole time i was watching the movie frollo the the bad guy hated him hated him just like oh mm, 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 i really hate you but i knew i knew the whole time i'm like the way that my mind is going to change when I'm reading this book, like I just knew she was going to make me fall in love with with, with this guy. It's not the perfect like reimagining. It's not like, scene by scenes, but like to have an idea of the characters and what's going on. Yeah, I just I just honestly just love her writing. Like the whole series is so good, but this one is the darkest out of all five. I was reading some scene. I'm just like, oh, well that is that's a clear vision. You just. Put it out there so check out trigger warning if you decide to read this one it is very very dark i was sitting there like oh okay i did not see that coming but yeah no you went there you went there but i'm eating eating this up i follow fatacade and amaya fatacade is a priest um a questionable priest nonetheless a priest and we follow amaya amaya is a pole dancer she has a brother named quentin her little brother she lives in this town that everybody hates her everybody thinks that she's a witch because of something like a horrible 
terrible mother said the mother's missing no one knows where she's at but everybody in the town hate amaya they hate her uh they hate quentin's kids bully quentin and no one likes them they want them out of the town and they think that she's also a witch father kid comes in the town he's new to the town he's supposed to be this new priest you know all holy and good because you're a priest that's what you expect from a priest right um this man is everything but holy like not who you would choose to be a priest he's not who you would think of because chapter one honestly no 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 the prologue this meant did something i was just like whoa that is not where i saw this going at all it was a prologue i'm like oh i, I didn't even catch a breath i didn't you didn't even say hello nothing like what about hello what about hi he did something and you were just like oh, okay mm, okay but he's a priest freeing people of their sin in a very um questionable ways but nonetheless it's freeing them <laughs> like i can't say that's the only thing i feel like it's the only way i could say so i would like spoil it because i really want to like i really want to spoil it I like this is what this man did but i think everyone should read this book it's really really dark so if you want to read it i would say check all trigger warning all trigger warning because a lot of things happen in this book that i don't think like most people will want to read about but for me i'm eating it up wow dark crazy mm, mm, mm. but after seeing amaya for the first time father kid is enthralled by amaya he cannot stop thinking about her he's talking to her he's thinking of her he's going to this dance club that she goes to and he's just he's like wow why can't i just get her out of my mind now i'm thinking about this girl way too much and obviously he's a priest he should not feel you know attracted by someone you shouldn't want to I mean, I think like they're all human. You might see somebody like, oh, she's a beautiful person, but not the way that he's feeling. You know what I mean? But this man, he's stuck in her. He can't stop thinking about her. He's just everything. He's just Amaya, 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 Amaya. Being that you're a priest, this should not happen. And so um, they get to talking. Things happen. A lot of things happen. He is so sweet to Quentin, her little brother. Like this had my heart just so happy. Like he's just so he's just so nice to him and like the fact that everybody else is so mean to quentin like kids bully quentin and the fact that no one has ever been so kind to them i'm just like this warms my heart like i love this man so so much but right now though what's happening like the big crazy twist is that amaya has to get married to like the bad guy like <laughs> the bad guy which is like the blonde guy in the movie parker he is the worst like honestly like both him and fatigade the worst like the worst man you know but we're rooting for fatty kid in this so like technically in our eyes is a good one but like he is not they both are horrible horrible but parker is actually just the worst the worst but amaya has to marry him because of something that happened and fatty kid is the reason that that something happened like the whole town is accusing amaya that she did something that fatty kid did instead so that's where we at and it's crazy it's a whole crazy wild ride and i'm eating it up and i'm loving it and i just want to know how it's gonna end like i have the perfect ending in my head like i know how i want it to end but i'm just waiting to see if what i think or what i want to happen is going to happen hopefully yes hopefully hopefully but i'm loving this i'm enjoying this i yeah but like i it's emily mcintyre and i knew like once i picked up her book it was going to be good and i was going to enjoy it yeah. Okay, so I am done with Cross. We finished Cross and I started the problem with dating. I was supposed to start Wildfire by Hannah Grace, but the thing is, I completely forgot that the book club that I'm in is actually meeting up tomorrow. Like I was in a group chat just like, why is everybody talking about tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow? Like, are we meeting up tomorrow? And I was like, oh my God, we are. We are. And I have not started, I, I hadn't started the book. So completely, I was just like, oh babes, you're gonna, you're gonna have to wait. I have to pick this up because I hate going to the book club and I didn't read it. Especially if I was the one who's like, let's read this book. I was the one who said, let's read <laughs> the newest book by Brittany Cherry. This is a problem with dating. 
and I didn't I I can't go and be like I didn't read it actually I finished cross I ended up giving this four star this was the most twisted one out of all five of them like this was twisted it was gruesome it like the ending something happened I was like mm, this is gruesome this is a lot okay I'm a visual reader so I was just picturing everything like a movie so be careful if you're going to do it but yeah thank you so much stay blessed stay kind and yeah take care of yourself I will see you next time bye